Today is Saturday, March 16th, which means that I've officially been in Korea for one month. Wow. <laughs> so I am going to talk about how my month so far has been in Korea and yeah, just everything. So let's get into it. So I landed in Korea on a Saturday around 5 in the morning-ish Korean time. And so my body was out of whack. It was very out of whack. And at the time, I was supposed to be staying in a hostel in Itaewon. Um, I already paid for everything. I already um, looked at how to get on the subway and get to Itaewon all the way from Incheon. But I actually met up with some friends who also landed about an hour or so after me. And it was nice because I was alone, like I had nothing, I had no one. I I wasn't panicking, but I was kind of like, I'm in a foreign country, I don't know where I am, I don't know anyone, like this can be bad. And so when um, my friends told me that they were landing in a little bit, I was like, okay, I'll wait for you at the airport and then um, we'll figure out, you know, how we split off into our separate ways from their own. And so, they are also fellow Nigerians, and so they were actually staying in, staying in an Airbnb in Dongdaemun, and you know I was starting to regret, not regret, but kind of like I could have stayed with them in their Airbnb instead of going to a hostel with a whole bunch of strangers that I don't know. Um, like I could at least be with people that I know, and so. I decided then and there to cancel my hostel reservation and stay in the Airbnb with them. Thankfully, um, the people in the Airbnb are super nice. They actually didn't charge me the whole price. They only charged me the price of um, the cancellation fee just for one day. And I was supposed to be staying there for four days. So the original price of the hostel I paid was like $55 but they only charged me like $14 which is super nice I would definitely recommend them if you are looking for a hostel in the Itaewon area and it's really affordable and actually really nice and they serve breakfast so I went to the hostel with my friends I stayed there with them and we had a blast like we really did and like I'm so glad that I got to come to Korea early and also be with people that I knew because it made everything feel a little less scary being surrounded with people that like I was comfortable with especially before going into orientation like I knew people so while we were in Seoul before the orientation we were here for about four or five days before orientation started which was really good because we got to adjust to the time zone adjust to just traveling and being in a different country and the different food and different things like that and so um while we were staying in Seoul we went to Itaewon, we went to Myeongdong, we went to Yoido. We went to quite a few places which was really nice to experience you know just to get yourself kind of familiar with the country that you're in and not just sit in your airbnb for the next four days like crying to yourself like why did i do this to myself why did i come here kind of thing which to be honest because i'm a very um reserved to myself kind of person i feel like if i had stayed in the hostel by myself especially with a bunch of strangers that i don't know i feel like i honestly would have just for the most part stayed in my bed kind of like sad to myself like why did i do this i miss my home i miss my family i miss my friends i miss the food that i always eat and things like that but because i was with people that i felt familiar with and they pushed me to kind of go out of my comfort zone like i feel like like i really got to get a better experience than i probably would have if i was alone and we all became super super close um the last day of the day that we were staying at the airbnb um because one of us was going to orientation a day earlier um myself and another friend had to leave the airbnb that day because it was the last day 
and so we decided to stay at the spa on air in the Incheon airport which is a jinjilbang if you don't know what a jinjilbang is it's basically a bathhouse where you can just look up jinjilbang yeah it was a very interesting experience and i think what's so funny is that out of the three of us i'm more closer with originally i was more closer with um friend and team one and i wasn't really super close with the friend that i went to the gym jumpong with and so like we saw each other butt naked like it was that kind of moment and so we became really close after that and yeah like i think that experience can you imagine experiencing that after being in korea for only four days like yeah it was very interesting and so the day for orientation came because we were already staying at the airport it was really easy for us to go to the pickup the epic orientation pickup and so orientation happened i will be making a video about orientation later so i won't go into a lot of detail right now in this video because then it'll get super long um, after orientation, on the last day of orientation is when you leave to go to your respective province or city. And so um, all the Sejong people got together, we got on a bus, and we pretty much left. And um, we got to a rest stop right before Dejan. So we got to take um, a little bit of a break and then we got back on the bus. We went straight to the Dejon Immigration Office Center and applied for our ARC, our Alien Registration Card, which is super important while you're here because that's basically like your form of ID. Um, we applied for that. Right after that, we went to the bank. Um, pretty much all of the Sejong Office of Education uses Nongkyup, which is NH Bank, and so we applied for the Nongkyup checkings account, savings account, and remittance account so we could send money back home to our um, home countries. Right after that, we met our co-teachers and that was so nerve-wracking because this is pretty much it. This is where you're thrown into seeing what your school is like, your co-teacher, which is such an important relationship to have while you're here in Korea, like your co-teacher they're not your parent but they help you do a lot of well they should help you do a lot of important things like um things to do with your banking things to do with vacation all of that different stuff and so like you know that first meeting with your co-teacher the first moment that you meet them obviously you want to make a good impression and yeah it was just kind of stressful um, I met my co-teacher, she's super sweet, um, we hit it off like immediately. I think because my co-teacher is kind of around the same age as my mom and I'm a little bit older than her daughter, she kind of sees me as like a daughter in a way and so she's so sweet. Actually during the epic orientation was my birthday and um, while we were driving in the car to my apartment she was telling me that her birthday was this coming sunday and i was saying oh you know my birthday was last week during the orientation and she was so sweet she said oh you know what we'll get a cake on the first when, when we go to school tomorrow and of course i'm thinking oh she's just saying it to be nice like she's just so sweet and she actually does end up buying me a cake but it was so cute like i love my school i love my school i love my co-teacher I can go on and on about how lucky and blessed that I am to have the school and the co-teacher that I have. And so yes, you meet your co-teacher, your co-teacher pretty much takes you to your apartment. They may also take you to the school to meet the principal, vice principal, other co-teachers. They might just drive you by your school just so you know the kind of area that your school is in. My teacher did that because the school is on the way from um, driving to my apartment. So I got to see the outside of my school, and then we went straight to my apartment. Um, we pretty much checked that everything was in order, the washing machine, the bed, the water, the gas, just making sure that everything worked and that it was in good condition. 
And then right after that, we went to Home Plus. We went to Home Plus to get um, like basic shopping things that I needed. But yeah, from then on, that's it. You're here. Literally, the day that I got to Sejong, the next day I had to go to school. I didn't teach, and obviously the students aren't in school yet, so it was pretty much just me meeting the vice principal, meeting all the other teachers, and turning in important documents that I need to submit to my school, just getting used to the school environment, getting used to Sejong and taking the bus. Um, another super important thing that I didn't mention, I live in Sejong, but a lot of English teachers actually live in Jochuan. So Jochuan is a smaller town outside of the main city Sejong and it's kind of unfortunate because you know you have to take a bus to Sejong every time you want to go into the city and personally I don't mind but it's just kind of like an extra thing that you have to do to get to my school from my apartment, it's about a 45 to 50 minute bus ride, which personally I don't mind because it was the same, that's the same amount of time that it took the bus from my own house to my university back at home. So I'm kind of used to that. Um, I'm used to it, like it's not a big deal to me. And honestly, I've heard of people having to take longer commutes to their school. So I was pretty grateful that it wasn't more than an hour it is kind of it does kind of suck you know because jochiwan is a little is a lot smaller than sejong but another thing is that sejong is such a new city that like everything is so clean it's so fresh and new there's a whole bunch of apartments but for the most part that's kind of it like it's a lot of apartment complexes and um, a lot of construction going on and it is very clean, but that's it. That's all it feels like, just a bunch of buildings. And there are a few good restaurants around, but I feel like because the cost of living is a little bit expensive, a lot of businesses end up closing down. And like, I'm not making this to discourage people from coming to Sejong or putting Sejong as your preference because there are good things about living in Sejong and Jochiwan, like here in Jochiwan, I live about a 10-15 minute walk from the train station which I can go anywhere in Korea and it's really convenient to have that super close to me but I guess just realize that it's not Seoul like this isn't um, a super super big city where there's always things to do 24-7 Daejeon is also really close to Daejeon um, so you can go to Daejeon on the weekends. You can find a lot more things to do in Daejeon than you can in Sejong. But the good thing is that it's super close. Hmm, some of the things that I had to get used to while being here in Korea. I guess you can say culture shock. To be honest, I haven't experienced culture shock. At least I don't think I have. The only things that kind of... bug me a little is there's no hand soap in the bathroom either there won't be hand soap or it'll be a bar of soap and my mind is like why can't i just pump soap like you know i don't want to touch a bar of soap but that's how they do things here in korea so yeah most of the time the bathrooms we will either have no soap or they'll have a bar of soap another thing in the bathrooms is tissue paper so either they won't have tissue paper or you'll be lucky and they do have tissue paper but the tissue paper will probably be in like a container outside of the stall so if you go into the stall and you use the bathroom and you realize i forgot to grab tissue paper then that's that's your own thing like just make sure that you grab tissue paper before you get into the stall or just bring some with you in your purse or in your pocket. Another thing that I had to get used to here in Korea is the air quality. So I already knew this about Korea before coming here, but um, the air can be really bad sometimes. There are a lot of apps that you can use to help you um, check the air. They'll send you alerts when the air is really bad and you need to wear a mask. But 
sometimes the air is so bad and I'm just like, how can people live here? Like, why would you want to live here when the air is this bad? Like, you can't even go outside without putting a mask on. Like, that's something that I'm getting used to. When I first got to Sejong, for the first week, the air was so bad. Like, it was very bad. Thankfully, recently, the air has been really, really nice. So, yeah, that's... That's like a day to rejoice when the air is super nice. Another thing that I've had to, I guess, get used to seeing a lot is a lot of children, a lot of little kids, you'll see them after school just walking around on their own um, without an adult. Um, and I mean like elementary school kids, like little kids. And to me, I'm just like, where is your mother? Like, where is your, where are your parents? Why are you out here on your own, you know? And from what my co-teachers explained to me is that um, a lot of students end up going to Hagwons after school, which are like private schools. And so because their parents are at work, they kind of have this independence to, I don't want to say take care of themselves, but basically take care of themselves. So if their parents are at work and, you know, they get out of school, they have to go to the Hagwon, they have to go to their Taekwondo practice, they have to go to their um, sports practices, they have to do, pretty much go to all these things, and then still have to eat afterwards. So sometimes they'll go to, you know, restaurants by themselves, different things like that. And, like, I'm not saying, you know, everywhere you go, you see, you know, little kids just walking around into the restaurants, like, all by themselves, but... You know, when I see it, sometimes I'm just like, my parents would never, my parents would never, okay? And so that's something that, even though I've been here for two weeks, like I'm still getting used to seeing. Overall, my first month in Korea has been really great. I have a great school, I have a great co-teacher. Actually, all of my co-teachers are amazing. All of my students are amazing. I. I have a good apartment, I have nothing to complain about, to be completely honest, I'm honestly so grateful, super super grateful, I've had a great experience, I've made um, really great friendships that I know even after I leave Korea I will still be friends with these people and that's just the goal, you know? Like, just to get, like, the best experience possible. And I feel like I'm really getting that. And I'm so grateful that I came and that I'm here. Like, honestly, sometimes it feels so strange. Like, I can't believe I'm actually here. Like, I'm doing this. But sometimes you do have those moments, like, why am I here? Um, I want to go home. And you just have to keep motivating and reminding yourself, like, why you are here and what what you are getting out of this i think that pretty much sums up how my one month in korea has been so far and my experience so far so again i'm super grateful and blessed and thankful that i'm having a great experience because i know that that's not the case for everyone again i will be making a video about orientation i will be making an apartment tour video to show you my apartment. I will be making a video about um, Sejong and Jochiwon and you know what they actually look like because another thing that is kind of unfortunate is that if you look up Sejong or even Jochiwon on YouTube or just on Google in general, not that much information shows up and it makes sense because Sejong is very new but at the same time it's kind of like if you if someone tells you that you're moving to this city and you have no idea what it looks like, no idea what to expect, that kind of makes you nervous and really scared. And yeah, I just want to show people what Sejong and Jochiwon are like so that they know what to expect if they come here. If you have any questions about Korea, um, anything, if you have any questions, leave me a comment and let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!